These three Yu-Gi-Oh cards are garbage. Hey everyone, I'm Jesse from the J Andrew Zone. In this video, we will be talking about three, three, three retro Yu-Gi-Oh boss monsters that are just complete garbage. Why they flopped? Let's find out. So the first one I want to talk about is probably everyone's favorite, Gate Guardian. Gate Guardian is such an awesome boss monster, is a fan favorite of many Yu-Gi-Oh people. I can see why. It was one of like the big boss monsters. It was the big one right before Pegasus, right before the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. This was the Eliminator's best monster, the Gate Guardian. It's three tiered monstrosity, very vibrant monster. It was really cool because you had to tribute three monsters to create this gigantic one. It wasn't a fusion, it was it was something different. But the problem with this is that the three monsters you need to tribute were also tribute monsters that was asking for a lot. Because when it comes to Gate Guardian, it just didn't have any support with it. And really to this day, to of this day of August of 2021, and I hope I'm eating my words a year from now. But this card has had no sort of, of updates whatsoever. It has no retrains in like a fusion version or an XC's version be kind of cool. There's no support cards to get it out quicker and easier. There's no speed duel skills, which kind of surprised me personally, because in speed duels, it was all about the dual monsters era stuff. And we saw so many support for a variety of cards like Great Moth, like Serpent Knight Dragon, but not Gate Guardian? That's just bizarre to me that they didn't even build one of these decks out of it, and that's just such a shame, you know? Gate Guardian is so cool, and it needs something. The closest thing we ever got was in the video games when it had a ritual card for it, but even still, you still needed Sangha, Kazuchin, and Suijin. It was so hard to build anything around this, sure you could build a deck around it, but it certainly wouldn't be any good. If we're talking specifically in Retro Yu-Gi-Oh, you're better off just playing like a Sangha of the Thunder than running the other two or Gate Guardian whatsoever. You can get more off with having one of these other monsters or something else in your critter format deck, let alone goat format. There's just so much better ways you can go about it than having a gate guardian. It's, it's, it's why, I'm just, you gotta ask yourself why it just hasn't received any support when it's clear Konami has been just full on nostalgia blast with Dark Magician support, Blue Eyes, etc, etc. All these classic cards and monsters, even with some that tend to surprise us from time to time, but the one that shouldn't surprise us that we just don't see is Gate Guardian. And just having this monster has no effect, hard to get out. That's 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 about it. You know, it's it's not worth it, and that's just the the bottom line. All right, next card we're talking about is kind of two cards, but I sort of alluded to it. Uh, was Great Moth and the Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. This is more towards Great Moth. See, the thing with Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth is that it did get some support in speed duels, and it does have good stats. The fact is that the summoning requirement for both monsters are just absolutely absurd. You can only summon it by tributing a Petite Moth while it's equipped by Cocoon of Evolution. And to get Great, great Moth out, you need to have it equipped for 4 turns. And for Perfectly Ultimate, it's 6 turns. Can you imagine waiting that long for a monster? Because not only do you have to get Petite Moth out, you also have to get Cocoon of Evolution out. So these are two monsters you gotta got get out, which probably could take 2 turns to get out, let alone having uh, the Petite Moth to stay on the field. Petite Moth is a 300 attack, 200 defense, normal monster. That's complete garbage. And it'd be cool if at least like Larva Moth maybe has some, but Larva Moth is only that it can be summoned after a second turn, so it's not like it's a, it's an effect version of Petite Moth where it reduces the turns, it's just, it's like an even shittier Grey Moth in a lot of ways, and you know, Cocoon's Evolution is kind of cool because it is a very gimmicky card in early Yu-Gi-Oh! It kind of is the first Union monster when you think about it, but 2000 Defense, like, sure, it's not bad per se, that's kind of like the, the level of defense you, you want to have, but keep in mind that 
in Metal Raiders, the set that Cocoon of Evolution came out, we already had board wipe cards like Dark Hole and Raigeki and Tribute to the Doomed and Fissure. This Fissure is definitely going to take out Cocoon of Evolution with that the zero attack. And to get out something like four turns for Great Moth, with which only has 2600 attack, you're better off just tributing for a Summon Skull during your first turn than waiting for a, a monster with slightly more attack. Now I get why it wasn't higher because of the manga. They didn't want Weevil to have a monster that was stronger than Blue Eyes White Dragon, and I certainly understand that. But when it comes to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, that just isn't gonna cut it. Like maybe if you had something that was at least 2800, 2900, sure, let's go with that. But just 2600 attack for four turns, having to let that thing just kind of sit there. Especially if you have to wait two more turns, and that's just, that feels so long to get out a perfect ultimate great moth. Now, of course, we did see support in the TCG in much, much later years in uh, the Ultra Kuna of Evolution and some other support cards, which really helped it a lot. When it comes to great moth specifically, it there's no reason once Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth and that support came out that Great Moth is just, why does this card even exist? At least with Larva Moth, you can normal summon it. Actually, no you can't. That card is even garbage too. All these cards suck. And the third card we got for you, the third garbage failed Yu-Gi-Oh! Retro Boss Monster. It's words I can throw in a sentence in any order. It works, it checks out whatever is vampire genesis the genesis of vampire vampire genesis was released in zombie madness and it's, it's a cool looking card it's a big swole jacked up vampire thing out the genesis of the vampire i guess it it jenna does what vampire lore don't but the thing with vampire genesis is that it's another that it's another one of these monsters like Grey Moth and Geek Garden, where you have to special summon it. But this time you have to banish a Vampire Lord, and once per turn you can discard a zombie monster, then target one zombie in your graveyard with a level less than this card monster, and special summon that target. Boy, is this bad in a lot of ways. First, you have to banish Vampire Lord. And for those who know, Vampire Lord is a pretty good card. It's a one tribute monster that can come back from the dead if it's destroyed by a card effect, and when it inflicts battle damage, you can destroy cards from your opponent's deck. That's really good. So the fact that you're getting rid of a monster like that for something like this, its effect is it's significantly worse. You still have to discard zombie monsters to bring back zombie monsters, and it's not just any monster, it's one with a level less, not less or equal to, it's just less than. So you're just constantly getting rid of monsters. And it'd be so much better if it was just once per turn, bring back a zombie monster, or bring back a banished zombie monster, just anything. If it was a banished zombie monster, then maybe you can play around with your opponent trying to get rid of a vampire lord. If it was just a one from the graveyard, yeah, that'd be that'd be better. At least you get one zombie monster per turn. It's you know it's slightly better than like a zombie master in that regard, and it's kind of earlier. And the attack boost is good with 3,000 attack. It is a very hard hitting zombie and an archetype that doesn't really have many hard hitting zombies. But you're banishing a better monster for a worse effect. And typically with Vampire Lord is that sure, its attack isn't too much, but if you're playing a zombie deck, you're gonna be running Ryu Koki, which does have slightly higher attack. And the only reason why you would run Vampire Genesis would be for its attack, but at that point, just run anything better. Uh, Despair from the Dark has 2800 attack, and that card has that effect where, it's, where if your opponent makes you discard it from your hand, it can come back. That's better, that's inherently better than Vampire Genesis. It came out when there's already better cards that do basically what it does, just with many better things. And especially when you compare it to other boss monsters of that sort of era, like Neo Daedalus. Even Infernal Flame Emperor was better. Red Eyes Darkness Dragon. Vampire Genesis just does not cut it whatsoever. And it sucks because I like the design of the card. I think the idea is there but they just neutered it and gimped it so hard, it's like, it's trash, it just, it was DOA. Yeah, that's really bad. So if there's any other boss monsters I miss, or maybe for a future video, definitely let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time.